some of the intuition. Okay. Okay. So now what we need, if we're going to do homework problems, that's all been you know fun and games and touchy feely, but we need the, an expression for the solution. You know, what is the answer? What is why? Right. So there's, since this is a partial differential equation, uh, it's it's got two second order terms in it. That basically means a lot of stuff can happen. Okay, if I had to put that in English, that would mean it can do lots of weird stuff. And physically, it can do lots of weird stuff. Right, I hold this string, I can shake it all kinds of ways. Right. So we're going to talk about different kinds of ways. So one is a traveling way. All right, this is the first one. So this is basically um, a type of solution to the wave equation. But it's also a type of motion of the string. Okay, It's a certain way that it moves. So we are going to go back to D. We're not going to call this Y. We're going to call it D because I want to match the book. Okay, So I'm just going to say D equals Y. It just means the vertical displacement. Okay, Just so the, this matches the book so you know what I'm talking about. So D is a function of X and T equals the displacement, vertical displacement. Well, it doesn't have to be vertical, but whatever. The displacement. All right. So... Uh, it's basically just a sinusoidal wave going to the right. Let's go ahead and just write it down. The solution looks like this. An amplitude, you can imagine a sinusoidal wave going down the string has an amplitude. Um, sine, you can probably also imagine it's sinusoidal as it goes down the string. And uh, here we write some funny letters. Kx minus omega t plus phi. Right? That is a traveling wave. Okay. La, 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 la. So let's talk about what all those things are. <laughs> Real quick, so you understand how to use it. All right, so I guess if I had to draw it, if you want a little drawing of what this looks like, you would say that here's the displacement of the thing as a function of position. So you can see if you were to do a snapshot in time and make a function of position, that you can make t equals zero, it's just a sinusoid. It's sine kx plus phi. So you could say, okay, it looks like this. It's some snapshot in time, but it's also moving because of the time dependence. So it's not really a, a, a function I can draw. Right? It's a function that moves in time. Um, so you could draw it that way, or you could also draw it this way. You could also say, plot it versus time, and let's watch one position. This was uh, a snapshot in time over here. Because I plotted it versus x. Now I'm just sitting on one part of the wave as it flies by and watching it go up and down. All, right. All of these are up to amplitude a. And one is versus time and one is versus position. OK, here we go. I should start doing these in groups. Okay. Okay, so let's look at some properties of the wave. Now that we have these two plots, in our head we see it flying by. Okay. So one that you might know from your youth is when you take a snapshot in time and you look at it, uh, what is the difference between this position and this position? The wavelength. You may have heard of the wavelength, right? But we don't see the wavelength in here, do we? Hmm, trouble. Um, if you just watch one position in time, watch it fly by, this is the period. Just like an oscillator, you would call that the period t. Right, period in seconds. And this is the wavelength in meters, say. Lambda. Oh, no. Wavelength in meters. You've probably heard of a wavelength before. Let's see. Why does it say A and D on the y-axis? So D, this is the displacement. This is the label for the axis. And A is the amplitude. So it's the D-axis and A is the amplitude. So the D's on top and the A's down below. Um, it's also going to negative A if we want to just make it more complicated. There you go. And this is 0. There you go. Um, OK, so you're OK with T. T is the period. F is 1 over T is the frequency in hertz. 
And I think you're even cool with omega, which is 2 pi over t, which is the angular frequency in radians per second. Okay, you love those, because we did them for circular motion, we did them for harmonic motion, it's the same thing for a wave. What you probably aren't going to like is applying those radian ideas to space. Yeah, so we've got to apply the idea of radians to space. Okay, so let's go. We're going to follow the same procedure here. Lambda is the wavelength, like I said over there, in meters. Let's skip this one and write something called k. k is 2 pi over uh, lambda. Okay, it's the wave number. And this is just how we describe the wavelength when we're writing wave equations. Okay, but there's a reason we do it this way. It is literally the number of waves per radian. Just like, uh, uh, it, 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 just like over here we have radians per, I'm sorry, it's the number of radians per wave, sorry. <laughs> okay, because we multiply it here, it's radians per meter. And this is in meters, and we end up with radians. Just like here, this is radians per second, and this is a second, so we end up with radians. Okay? So it is the wave number, it's the number of radians per meter. But the reason it has the word wave number, what it really means is you can work this out. If you were to go for a meter, it tells you how many waves fit in a meter. Right? Just like how many waves fit in a second, how many waves fit in a meter. Right? That's what this idea is. So it's just because we don't want to write 2 pi over lambda here all the time. Okay, so that's why we have this thing we just call k. If you want, you can write 2 pi over lambda over and over and over again. But I want you to get used to the idea of a wave number. So it's just the radian version of wavelength, just like you have a radian version of time. Okay, so there you've got all those parts. So, oh, look at my last, look at this. Oh, we're done, right? I ran out of notes. It sucks. God, it's such a rough day, I'm telling you. All right. Now, so we're going to start using this next time. We're going to use that solution and whatever we're going to do. Class is over, yes. Yeah, no, x is an independent.